In the video, a man who identifies himself as Keita Ito speaks fluently in Japanese while wearing the typical work attire of a Japanese artisan. He smiles and discusses the quality of iron pots, saying, This kind of iron pot is not outdated. It represents a legacy of craftsmanship. The video claims that this man is the fourth generation heir of the Ito family, a lineage of traditional Japanese pot makers. In 2018, in keeping with his father's wishes and skills, he collaborated with Shanghai's Yijia Living to produce these traditional iron pots, aiming to promote and celebrate this age-old craft. The Ito family has also received multiple awards in Japan. The video showcases iron pots with the English inscription made in Japan on their handles, and the product label indicates that they are manufactured by Ito Manufacturing, located in Amizu City, Toyama Prefecture, Japan. Many Chinese were touched by the man's advocacy of the traditional Japanese craftsman philosophy of dedicating one's life to a single craft. Despite the iron pots being priced between 800 to 1400 yuan, about 10 times the price of regular iron pots, they were extremely popular on the Yijia Living flagship store on the e-commerce platform Tmall. However, this success was short-lived. Two years after the iron pots became a hit, at the end of 2020, Chinese professional anti-counterfeiter Wang Hai revealed on Weibo that these purportedly Japanese-made iron pots were actually produced by a Chinese OEM factory. He also found that a domestically branded iron pot, identical to the one in question, was being sold for less than half the price. Adding to the irony, Keita Ito, who claimed to be the fourth generation heir of the Ito family, was actually portrayed by Chinese actor Hua Yuan. Thus, both the promotional video and the product itself were entirely made in China. According to conservative estimates based on e-commerce platform sales, by December 2020, these iron pots had sold for more than 30 million yuan, approximately 4.2 million US dollars. An investigation by reporters found that the so-called first-generation founder and second-generation successor, as shown in the promotional video, were actually photos of Japanese novelist Naoya Shiga and sculptor Kotaro Takamura, both born in 1883. This incident also caused a stir in Japan. Japanese media visited the company's registered address listed on the product packaging, only to discover that there was no such company registered in Imizu City, and the local area had no knowledge of any famous iron pots, let alone a four-generation Ito family of potmakers. The scandal of the best-selling iron pots quickly unraveled. Many Chinese consumers were shocked to learn about the deception, marveling at the sophistication of the fake. The scam involved not just the product, but also the creation of a seemingly perfect narrative and characters, making it a masterclass in deception. Consumers who had purchased these iron pots felt utterly deceived. The main perpetrator, Yi Jia, faced minimal consequences, with only the warehouse storing these iron pots being sealed. The low cost of devising this fraud was astonishing. Subsequent consumer rights protection efforts proved to be extremely challenging. Many consumers reported that Yija refused to honor the triple compensation for returns policy, offering only to refund the purchase price upon return of the pot. Some consumers said that Yija's customer service refused returns on the grounds that the pots had been used. Refunds were only issued after the e-commerce platform intervened. Why do Chinese merchants go to great lengths to market their products as made in Japan? This trend, known as pseudo-Japanese, has become particularly popular in China in recent years. It involves selling domestic goods under the guise of Japanese-style products. Chinese merchants have capitalized on the Chinese public's trust in the quality of Japanese goods. The same product, when labeled made in Japan, can command a much higher price. Some products, despite being entirely made in China, with no connection to Japan in terms of company location, raw materials, or production, simply add a Japanese character to their brand name or packaging. Even if these text editions are riddled with errors or don't form coherent sentences, the mere inclusion of a Japanese symbol can transform a mundane item into a highly sought-after commodity. For instance, a biscuit package uses the Japanese character no to give the impression of an imported product, followed by Chinese characters to identify it as a biscuit. Even if the subsequent Japanese text is incorrect, it doesn't detract from the fact that it's a layered biscuit. It's uncertain how many dairy cows there are in Hokkaido, Japan, but the abundance of Hokkaido milk-flavored products on supermarket shelves suggests a highly productive herd. Take, for example, this Hokkaido yogurt. From the brand name to the packaging, everything exudes a strong Japanese vibe. However, 
It is produced by the Beihai Farm in Shenyang, wholly owned by the Beijing-based Yuanqi Forest Food Technology Group, and has no actual connection to Japan. Yuanqi Forest, a purely Chinese brand, has successfully marketed itself with a pseudo-Japanese strategy. One of its sparkling water products gained popularity with its Japanese packaging. The packaging uses the Japanese character Ki instead of the Chinese Chi, and the manufacturer's name printed on the back of the bottle makes it appear to be a product imported from Japan, hence its sales success. If adding Japanese characters to snacks is meant to boost sales, then doing so for other products is aimed at raising prices. For example, grapes and strawberries with Japanese names like Shine Muscat and Awayuki, with their poetic names evoking a sense of ethereal beauty and packaged in fresh, light-colored designs with Japanese annotations, strawberries priced at 6 yuan per half kilo suddenly transform into unaffordable luxury fruits. However, this approach of simply changing product packaging and naming to create a Japanese style is just the basics. More aesthetically, discerning merchants have deciphered the code for high-end Japanese packaging. Flexibly use hiragana and katakana, keeping the brand name to three to four characters. Incorporate words like Saka, Kimi, and Fuji, which inherently carry a Japanese aura to a Chinese person. This forms the essence of naming pseudo-Japanese products. Tea and cake brands were among the first to reap the benefits of this trend. Nayuki's Tea, born in Guangdong province, is a prime example. Not only does its name include the Japanese hiragana no, but its English name Nayuki, also has a distinctly Japanese ring to it. The well-known pudding brand in China, Milkei Tokyo, is said to be a household name in Japan, often referred to as the Hermes of puddings. It boasts a strikingly Japanese-style font in its sign, enhanced by the addition of Tokyo. This suggests a famous confectionery store originating in Ginza, right? Wrong. In reality, Milkei Tokyo is a Chinese company located in Shanghai's Chiantan area. In Japan, there indeed exists a small, obscure pudding shop named Milkei, but it has no connection to Milkei Tokyo and is certainly not a household name in Japan. Despite this, the marketing strategy of mimicking Japanese style has been remarkably successful, leading to the establishment of over 50 stores across China. The mere words Japanese and handmade have become a free advertisement for the brand. Marubi, a skincare company known for its Haruki sub-brand in China, is another adept player. This genuine Guangzhou-based company named itself Marubi to match the Japanese pronunciation of its Chinese name. Subsequently, it launched the sub-brand Haruki, also derived from Japanese pronunciation, thus effectively doubling down on its brand identity. Marubi's packaging boasts bold claims like, Marubi is known for professionalism, just as Shiseido is known for art in Japan, founded in Showa 54, and Japanese eye care expert. However, investigations revealed that there is no Marubi company involved in cosmetics production in Japan, nor are Marubi products seen in the Japanese market, let alone being on par with Shiseido. In fact, Marubi's trademark was registered in China in 2000, marking it as a thoroughly Chinese company. Miniso employs a similar strategy. It claims to be a brand by a Japanese designer and, with a logo reminiscent of Uniqlo and a design style akin to Muji, implies genuine Japanese manufacturing. In truth, the company was established in Guangzhou, China in 2013, exemplifying a pseudo-Japanese brand. Nonetheless, Miniso has rapidly expanded globally, claiming to have over 5,000 stores worldwide. In fact, such pseudo-Japanese products are ubiquitous across various industries in China, including fashion, bathroom products, furniture, and food industries. To this day, this remains a lucrative strategy for many brands to penetrate the market. However, not all pseudo-Japanese ventures are successful. Imitating Japanese style can be risky, especially when excessive Japanese language use leads to errors and potentially embarrassing situations. For instance, this wafer is Japanese for smelly male genitalia, making it quite embarrassing for those who understand Japanese. It was reportedly a major blunder by the manufacturer, resulting in considerable ridicule. While Japanese-style branding can bring profits, it also carries risks and can sometimes become a burden. This is exemplified by the recent popularity of Japanese restaurants in China. According to data from restaurant review platform Dianping, mainland China has 79,000 Japanese restaurants, the highest number in the world. 
Data from 2017 showed that only 3% of these restaurants are actual Japanese dining brands. The rest are run by Chinese, including Beijing's Murakami Ichia, Ju Ben, Hubei's Sen in Shika, and Zhejiang's Wasabiya. These restaurants vary in quality, but their decor is authentically Japanese, claiming to use ingredients imported from Japan. Their posh ambiance indeed captures the hearts of consumers, making these establishments highly profitable. But unforeseen events can disrupt the best laid plans. On August 24 last year, the Japanese government began releasing contaminated water from the Fukushima nuclear accident into the ocean. On the same day, China's customs administration announced a complete halt to the import of Japanese seafood. Many might think this would lead to the closure of the thousands of Japanese restaurants in China due to a lack of raw materials. Don't worry, your worries are so very misplaced. While these restaurants profited by posing as Japanese during normal times, in a crisis, who would continue the act? Overnight, 79,000 Japanese restaurants became domestic. These restaurant owners first condemned Japan's discharge of nuclear-contaminated water, then clarified their seafood sources. We never use Japanese seafood. Our seafood is freshly delivered from nearby wholesale markets. They seemed to forget that just the day before, they were boasting about importing ingredients directly from Japan. Many Japanese restaurants quickly put up signs at their entrances, publicizing the origins of their main ingredients, salmon from Norway, Arctic shellfish from Canada, and mostly seafood from various regions in China. In short, none of the ingredients in these so-called Japanese restaurants came from Japan. Customers entering these Japanese restaurants no longer hear the Japanese greeting, welcome, or are recommended sashimi. Every Japanese restaurant and every server only has one thing to say, we are domestic and we have proof. While most Japanese restaurants were still emphasizing that their ingredients were not from Japan, some took a more creative approach to address the issue. For instance, they redefined the concept of a Japanese restaurant. A Japanese restaurant is one that serves everyday meals. This redefinition cleverly plays on the fact that the character for ni in Japan is the same as characters for everyday in Chinese, allowing a convenient reinterpretation. Some restaurants went a step further by changing their names entirely, switching from Japanese cuisine to Western-style cuisine, maintaining their upscale ambiance while adding a vintage flair. Others changed their cuisine entirely, transforming sushi restaurants into northeastern rice pockets or Tianjin-style rice dishes, exuding a pure, rustic charm. Overnight, thousands of Japanese restaurants magically transformed or reinvented themselves. Who cares if the customers are cringing in embarrassment, right? Those who had been swayed by the allure of exoticism and the promise of imported fresh seafood and top-quality dishes personally prepared by chefs were suddenly faced with a harsh reality. These were merely sales pitches, and they felt utterly deceived. Doesn't anyone speak for us consumers? This is pure fraud. The moment of realization for many came with the introduction of a so-called radiation protection meal set by a Japanese restaurant. It was as if a light bulb went off, revealing that, in the eyes of these businesses, Consumers are not patrons, but fools. The anguish of these consumers can surely be sympathized with. Before Japan started discharging nuclear waste into the ocean, Japanese quality and craftsmanship were admired, and had even become a common advertising trope, deeply ingrained in people's minds. Now, they realize that their pursuit was merely exploited by businesses, leading to an understandable sense of betrayal. Not just Japanese restaurants, but all pseudo-Japanese brands often face backlash from patriotic Chinese nationalists, especially when Sino-Japanese relations are tense, and the CCP deliberately stirs up anti-Japanese sentiment, making these businesses primary targets. In light of this, an increasing number of pseudo-Japanese brands are shifting towards national pride, removing their pseudo-Japanese labels after reaping the benefits of such strategies. For example, Nayuki's Tea, which we mentioned earlier, has been rebranding since last December, removing the Japanese character No from its store's signboards. They have also changed their English name from Nayuki to the Chinese pinyin Nai Share. Though officially this change was part of a seventh anniversary brand upgrade, it's clear that the primary goal was de-Japanization. Those who are observant might have noticed that over the past year, several well-known pseudo-Japanese brands like Yuenchi Forest, Fushao Peach, Miniso, and Marubi have quietly changed their images, altering their Japanese-style logos. 
The Nanjing milk tea brand Fuxiao Peach underwent two name changes. Its original name, Bianjing Tea House, was full of Japanese-ness to the Chinese public and a hot spot for copycats and knockoffs. Overwhelmed, the owners renamed it Fushimi Momoyama, only to accidentally collide with the name of a Japanese imperial tomb. They quickly changed it again to Fuxiao Peach. In 2021, Nongfu Spring launched a new white peach soda water, with official materials mentioning Dawn White Peaches from Fukushima Prefecture, Japan. This sparked user concerns about Fukushima's nuclear leakage and food safety. Nongfu Spring hastily distanced itself, but consumers were not convinced. Either it's false advertising or a health hazard. Eventually, the Market Supervision Administration announced that the raw materials do not come from Fukushima Prefecture, Japan, leading to the prompt withdrawal of the ad. During the 2020 pandemic, with travel restrictions in place, a trend of pretend travel emerged. During this period, the government of Foshan City in Guangdong Province replicated a popular area in Tokyo, Japan, and dubbed it Ichiban Street. This street is lined with various neon lights and signs in Japanese, related to anime, video games, and other aspects of Japanese pop culture, making visitors feel as if they're in Japan. Aside from the very Japanese-looking signs, this street also replicated Japanese bus stops and traffic signs, even including bicycle lane markings and bus priority signs on the roads, achieving an impressive level of imitation. Foshan's Ichiban Street tapped into people's desire to pretend to be in Japan, quickly becoming a sensation and attracting numerous tourists. Despite its almost indistinguishable imitation, many Chinese joked that one only needs to see the litter on the ground to realize it's a Chinese knockoff, not the real Japan. Japanese travel writer Lin Hui Mei told the Apple Daily that while some Chinese people like Japan, their interest is in Japanese material goods, not the culture. Lin pointed out that mainland China has many knockoff attractions like Foshan's Ichiban Street, but these sites only copy the exterior without capturing the soul. Some things that are intrinsic in a specific social environment and culture cannot be replicated easily. But as with the brands rushing to de-Japanize themselves, Ichiban Street's existence has always been controversial. Its alignment with the CCP's anti-Japanese sentiment has led to accusations of fawning over Japan. The street's initial success soon faded. Now, videos show many businesses have changed their signs, and the streets are filled with Chinese flags, creating a discordant scene. Many businesses have closed due to poor sales, leaving the area desolate. Some comment that when everything is going well with Japan, Japanese style represents aesthetics, quality, a distant aspiration, and a marketing tactic. But when Japan becomes a topic of controversy, Japanese style turns into a hot potato, with brands hastily distancing themselves. In this world, there are no principles, only business. As a developed country neighboring China, Japan's high-quality products and rich cultural exports, with tags like artisan spirit and durability, have greatly influenced the lifestyle and consumption habits of China's younger generation. The Japanese style has become a trend chased by many consumers. Businesses have capitalized on this mindset, leading to the prevalence of pseudo-Japanese brands. However, as Lin Huimei said, these pseudo-Japanese brands only imitate the surface. The true spirit of pursuing excellence inherent in Japanese products is the true essence of Japanese goods. This is something that Chinese brands can't replicate.